This is A game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what are we talking about? We're talking about why good women uh, defend the sisterhood, okay? Because there is a sisterhood defense force and it's not all comprised of women who would regard themselves as gynocrats, as feminists, as those so-called bad black women. Um, there's actually a component of that defense force that would consider themselves good black women. Black women that don't engage in certain types of behavior that I speak about on my channel and certain types of mindsets that I speak about on my channel, yet they feel the need to defend certain behaviors or feel triggered by certain types of things that I point out. And the, and the triggers differ for each woman. It, it could be a different trigger. But this is sort of why. Let, let's, let's go over why there's a defense of the sisterhood and its crazy behavior by so-called good women that don't engage in that behavior, that supposedly don't condone that type of behavior. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about with that is what you're defending. See, a lot of times these good black women are defending parts of themselves and they are defending the women in their family, mainly their moms. In their minds, they're defending these women. And it's really key, first of all, to talk about the defense of your mother and the defense of the women in your family that you care about and that you value. Regardless of the fact that these women might actually be a part of the gynocracy that's got you messed up, you know, that taught you these lost values that you have lived your life on, made certain decisions on, and then had to climb your way out of this certain mindset, okay? They're the ones that set you back. But yet you still feel the need to defend them because you love them. And here I'm not saying don't love your mom if you love your mom. If you got a relationship with your mom, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a relationship with your mother. Like, that's not what I'm here to say, because we're not here to talk about hating any particular black woman at all. Anyway, we're what what we hate and what we talk against is the mindset. We talk against the behavior. We talk against, you know, all of these things that destroy us as a group of women and as a group of people. That's what we don't like. That's what we're talking against. That's what I talk against. Okay. I don't really go for specific women and be like, I'm going in just on this woman just because. If I'm talking about a specific woman, I'm usually talking about her mindset or something that she has displayed rather than there's no attack on the actual individual. But there also doesn't need to be a defense of the individual if she's in the wrong and that's the first thing that you got to get over is your mom even if you are a woman that's climbing out of these mindsets and it's taking you a little bit to do that and you're in the process of rediscovering your femininity and rediscovering a value system that actually works for you and serves you that doesn't mean you got to defend your mom if she was wrong she wrong and it also doesn't mean you can't love her. It just means that you understand the truth about all of this stuff. And if she's in a position where it's indefensible, then it's indefensible. And see where you're getting caught up at, sis, is because you can empathize. You might be able to empathize with maybe why your mother is doing certain things or why the women in your life said certain things 
or why you used to be a certain way. You can empathize with that. You can see it. And that's, again, it's fine that you can empathize with it, but it doesn't mean that we need to defend it. See, there's a difference between understanding how it happened. I understand how it happens. I know exactly how it happens. Okay? I can sit and tell you about different women I know and the different histories that they have that have helped to create them as they are. Right? But the difference between understanding where it comes from and defending where it comes from is there is a difference because understanding it is one thing. Defending it is a cosign for the behavior. And that's that's the line you can't cross, right? And another thing about it is a good woman's defense of gynocratic behavior undermines what quote unquote good women are supposed to even be about. It cosigns and it validates the foolishness because hyenas want the cosign of all women everywhere. All the all the women, all the hyenas want all the black women, whether she engaged personally in this behavior or not, whether she's personally involved in this type of mindset or not, they're looking for the cosign of all women, which is why when women don't cosign, they call them names, mammies and pick me's and all this other type of stuff. That's where the name calling comes in at because you're not co-signing and you're not validating what we're doing. We're on foolishness. We on demon time. We on a lot of other stuff. And because we're all women, we're all supposed to be co-signing it because you're supposed to see where I'm coming from as a woman and as a sister. Never mind that I'm doing something crazy and it doesn't need to be co-signed. It actually needs to be called out, not co-signed. It needs to be called out and brought out, not validated, right? So when good women, women that gynocrats know are not gynocrats, actually co-sign gynocratic behavior, that validates it and keeps it going. It allows it to persist unabated and say, well, all the women think like this. All the women agree with this. So we're going to keep doing this because all the women have fallen in line. Even the so-called good women do this. Even the so-called good women, even though she might not do it in her life, she secretly agrees that this is the correct way. So we get validated by it. And anybody that comes along to say, no, 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 this is not what we're supposed to do. This isn't what we're supposed to be doing as women. Then that gets shot down. So really you're shooting yourself in the foot. When you defend gynocratic behavior, but you call yourself not part of that behavior, you're really shooting yourself in the foot and you're shooting other women who don't agree in the foot also. See, that's that that's that fence straddling is the reality of that. And see, that defense force, this is where that stuff about not all comes from. Because even if you don't engage personally, right? You condone the behavior and you don't want that part of you that condones the behavior to be indicted along with so-called hyenas. So that when we're talking about these behaviors, especially on my channel and other channels that are similar, that talk about similar subjects from this standpoint, that's why even the so-called good women will jump in the comment section and be like, not all, because I don't, if, if this don't apply to you, then there's no reason for you to get triggered and jump in the comment section talking about don't say all. Because first of all, didn't nobody say all. Didn't nobody say you. But a hit dog always holler. So there's some part of you that agree with the gynocratic behavior and then when it get called out, you feel personally attacked. Like somebody said something about you. Somebody said something about you and your mama. Like ain't nobody talking about you and your mama, sis. And if I am inadvertently talking about you and your mama, you need to look within. Okay? Instead of instead of jumping up all over social media trying to defend yourself and nobody attack you. That's where that defense come from. What you what you can't say all oh, because me and my friends or me and you know what I'm saying my sisters or whatever we don't engage in that. Okay, good. That's good for you. So don't engage in it, but don't defend it either. It doesn't need defending. The indefensible behavior does not need to be.
defended by, especially by women that say they don't engage, they don't condone, and they don't see any. You see what I'm saying? And since the, the women that I'm talking about might have been you a year or two ago, it might have been you yesterday. Okay, fine. But you don't need to defend that. Because indefensible destructive behavior is just that. And if you call yourself a good woman and you still getting triggered by the stuff that I'm talking about on this channel, understand that you have to confront the gyno crack within you. That's what that really is saying. There's a part of you that agree with this and you feel offended. And this isn't an attack. This is a word of caution. This is a word of warning. Okay? It literally is about if it don't apply, let it fly. But if this triggers you, if these things trigger you, then it's triggering you for a reason. And it would behoove any of us that if we get triggered by a woman talking about gynocratic behavior and, and saying that it's negative and that we don't need to engage in that behavior, then you need to check the little gynocrat within. There's a little gynocrat in there that's getting mad, okay, and doesn't want to be called out, doesn't want to be held accountable, doesn't want their feet held to the fire about any of this. Right. So it has to be understood because we have grown up under this lost value system. You grew up here, especially if you grew up here, you grew up under the lost value system. There's some part of you that's gynocratic. OK, good woman or not, if you even if you are a good woman, right, there's still parts of us that grew up underneath this. And so there are parts that are gynocratic because we grew up in a gynocratic society. It was taught to you from birth. Uh, to before, right when you can understand things, that's when you start absorbing these types of thought patterns, feminism, feminist ideas, all these other sorts of things that have worked their way into the fabric of how you think and behave and interact. So what these lessons, what my content is designed to do is also to help the women discover that part of themselves so you can work on it, not so you can get mad. Because we, we good when whatever's being said don't hit close to home. But when it start hitting close to home, then some of us like to get upset. Some of us like to be like, oh, well what's going on like why is she talking about that part that might be the part that needs to be discussed i went through this process so i know what i'm talking about the removal of all of the different pieces of being a gynocrat you may not overall you may not agree with that mindset and that's an excellent first start but then there's also these little details and these little pieces that have worked their way into the fabric of us. And then once we run up against that, we a lot of times you get triggered by it and be like, wait, 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 wait. I kind of agree with that though. Why do you agree with it? Why are we finding parts of the gynocracy that we actually like? Because that part is in us. So we have to actually work on that part, the part you got triggered by, that's the part that need to work. That's the part that needs to be re-examined underneath the microscope of the 10 life values, right? To see where that's at so that we can actually start working on that part of us. And that's where this constant improvement actually come from. That's, that's how we're supposed to be doing that, that constant state of improvement to constantly be working on that. Stop defending the sisterhood. If you call yourself a good woman and you don't not involved with the sisterhood, stop stop being a defense force for it. Because that's how they that's one of the ways they have thrived and gotten to the point that they've gotten to where 
that's basically our culture because good women covered them. All right. Sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host of Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.